Hey everyone, welcome to the New Frontier where I'm attempting to add just another grain of valuable information to the vast ocean that is the internet, specifically related to public policy. Here today we're talking about puppy mill bills. Now, have you ever heard of a puppy mill before? If not, puppy mills are, that term is typically used by animal rights activists to uh, showcase what it's like to sell animals or mass breed animals for sale in pet stores. So many pet stores, even chain corporate stores, but mostly small businesses, typically sell some animals, dogs and cats, which are considered purebreds and were raised by breeders and then sold to those local pet stores. A lot of animal rights activists especially are concerned, but also just many citizens in general are concerned about the health and well-being of the animals that are being sold at these stores, along with the condition they are in once sold. So essentially, they're being treated poorly, but they're also catching diseases that make them less valuable. So a lot of times what will happen is animals will be raised in cages or outside after they are bred, uh, catch some sort of pneumonia or parasite, and then be sold as a purebred, which they may be, but are also diseased and then will die once they are purchased by a family many times for thousands of dollars. And that's concerning both for the customers, those that care about the animals, and for uh, animal rescues because animal rescues are attempting to sell animals or just get rid of them for free so they can find a new home and are not on the streets. So animal rescues are also a large part about the puppy mill bill concern that's going on right now. So in Colorado, and in New York, puppy mill bills are being proposed and have been in committee for some time during this 2020 legislative session. And they're starting what is a trend that we're gonna see in multiple other state houses and legislators this, legislatures this year. And that is, this, that is discussing what to do about puppy mills and how to go about regulating them or go about just generally banning the practice altogether. There is a lot of small businesses and small business supporters that believe any sort of puppy mill bill ban is actually harming small businesses. Some even uh, mention them as small business bans. Uh, but like I said, there are many activists, especially young people, millennials, that have taken up arms against the sale of purebred dogs at uh, local pet stores. Now in Maryland and California, this uh, practice has already been in place. Uh, there has been a ban in place in both of these states for some time now, mostly stressing concerns of animals being treated like breeding machines. You know, some animals would be bred nine, ten more times uh, in their lifetime, which can really damage female dogs and cats, many times just to produce some side income for some person. But also, uh, these bills are meant to help uh, get rid of the problem that is too many dogs and cats on the streets. Places like Maryland and California have large cities that are overpopulated by uh, stray cats and dogs that need to find homes in order to help clean up the streets. So by eliminating these purebred uh, animals uh, from the market, you increase the demand for a lot of rescue animals. So Colorado and New York uh, have currently been discussing these bills, and we're going to discuss both but we're gonna start with, California, uh, with Colorado. The Colorado House uh, Rural Affairs and Agriculture Committee recently voted against a bill and ended the discussion of a bill that would make it illegal to sell cats and dogs at pet stores. Uh, this is what we uh, discuss, puppy mills, selling animals from breeders to pet stores and then to the public. That is like the puppy mill chain. Puppy mill could be considered a partisan term so I'm using it just because that's how these bills are being labeled, literally titled things like puppy mill ban or pet store sale regulations. I'm just gonna go ahead and use puppy mill because that's what's trending. That doesn't necessarily mean that's my opinion on the word or the issue. Many people use the word to describe commercial facilities, but its actual legal definition, the legal definition of puppy mill came from a uh, District Court of Minnesota case, Avinson v. Zagart in 1984, and the term was coined to mean a dog breeding operation in which the health of the dog is disregarded in order to maintain a low overhead and maximize profits. Oftentimes this means 
uh, having dogs stored outside or in grass or hay, or sometimes in facilities with 25 or more animals in small spaces, and overbreeding dogs. Now, not every store is considered a puppy mill and may be risking the health of animals in the process. It's just that animal rights activists target stores that are overbreeding dogs and selling them in poor health or storing them in poor conditions. Now, this Colorado bill tackles the issue by setting new standards for breeding and then also on the flip side outlawing the sale of all dogs and cats more broadly due to what is defined as an epidemic in the bill. So the bill starts like most bans, first laying out some sort of research or findings that the sponsor of the bill states are conclusive. And in this bill, House Bill 201084, it states that there is a nationwide epidemic of the sale and purchase of dogs and cats that come from high volume commercial breeding establishments, commonly referred to as puppy and kitten mills. Now the stated problems here include the health of the animals and what they can do to families and customers once poor health animals are in their homes, sometimes infecting other animals or dying and causing large losses of income that could have been spent rescuing animals. Now the bill prevents the sale from breeders to pet stores at flea markets outside in parking lots, etc. But also breeders can still sell animals just not to pet stores. But in order to sell them, the breeders have to meet certain higher standards that are in place. Now the sponsor of the bill and other supporters of the bill state that the new spe uh, specifications for what the facility looks like that an animal needs to be bred in is no different than what pet stores and animal rescue facilities also have to maintain. We're just now carrying those regulations over to local home breeders. And it looks like from my analysis of the bill that the standards are not too stringent, but uh, those that don't support the bill believe that this will end the practice of breeding purebred animals. Now, some of the specific uh, regulations are that animals must be kept in facilities with floors, so not outside or in hay or dirt, and that there must be no, uh, there cannot be more than 25 animals stored in a single place or bred by a single person and that you may not breed a cat or a dog more than once a year or six times in their entire life. I will state that not being able to breed an animal more than six, time in, six times in their life may end the practice of making a business out of breeding a single animal, but it certainly doesn't prevent the breeding of animals. And some would say this bill doesn't go far enough ending the practice of purebred animal uh, sales. But it does prevent the sale of animals over the internet and other trendy uh, ways to distribute puppies and cats and does have some stringent fees and penalties associated with that practice. Now, it is unclear whether or not this bill would affect just someone who uh, has a dog or cat that accidentally gets pregnant and then you attempt to get rid of the puppies online. But it does seem like it will also crack down on those practices, which may seem too stringent to some. Now, another way to go about this, so right now we have this Colorado bill that both completely bans the practice of selling animals uh, in stores from breeders, but still allows breeders to sell them if they meet more stringent standards. The New York bill tackles this from a supply side, and that is limiting the supply by limiting breeders to the number of animals they can sell each year, which makes it more likely for pet stores to start selling rescued animals. So incentivizing the practice of solving the problem that is the purpose of this bill, and that is getting animals that are rescued by government facilities and animal rescues in the homes of those that want animals. So here in this New York bill, it's Senate Bill 4234A. It's actually up for a vote in the Senate. It's on the calendar, but the Assembly bill is still in committee. It defines pet dealers as any person who in the ordinary course of business engages in the sale or offering for sale of more than nine animals per year for profit to the public. This both allows someone whose animals accidentally get pregnant to still be sold into the market and still allows the breeding of dogs as long as it's limited, typically to one pregnancy per year. Uh, unless a litter is larger than nine, then you would have to cut off the sale at that nine number. 
but it also uh, defines retail pet stores as a for-profit establishment open to the public that sells, sells or offers for sale animals to be kept as household pets, pet food, or supplies. The bill then makes it illegal for these two defined groups to work together. So pet dealers and retail pet shops can no longer have a legal relationship. And this is often the case for small businesses more than corporate chains, where a small pet store will offer breeders a certain bounty to bring them purebred dogs and then sell them for inflated prices in local towns. I know, for instance, like a German Shepherd, you could buy from a breeder for a few hundred dollars and then buy from a local pet shop for around eighteen hundred. And it's that cycle that causes large profits for small businesses that this bill is attempting to cut off in order to give businesses a new incentive to partner with animal rescues. And that's worked in through a strategic loophole that actually allows the void to be filled by the sale of animals that need uh, to be sold by these small businesses to make profit to be filled by animal rescues. Specifically, the bill states that these dealers can still work with and be in legal relationships with nonprofits and animal rescue facilities. Now, the pet stores are left with a bit of a different option, and that is still being able to meet the needs of their customers by solving the problem the bill is meant to solve. On the other side, many still oppose the bill, believing that the bill is meant to ban pet stores generally, and more specifically small businesses, since most corporate pet stores do not have relationships with breeders. And that's understandable. You know, you go to a Petco or a PetSmart, you're not going to see a large display of local purebred animals, but any local pet store will likely be selling purebreds, and that is because of the high profit margins from them. That'd be like banning the sale or of alcohol from restaurants. It's not really the food that those restaurants are making money for, just like it's not the pet food and supplies that pet stores are probably profiting from. It's the sale of the actual animals. And fans of purebred dogs are obviously forced to now look outside of the state and take other means in order to receive the same animals that they're likely still going to pursue. So in some instances, uh, you know, those opposing this bill believe this won't solve the problem because those who want purebred animals are probably already looking outside of the state for the animals they want because pure, purebreds are such an expensive endeavor in the first place, you're willing to travel in order to find the animal you want, and this regulation won't stop that and doesn't have any uh, legislation in it that would attempt to prevent that. Now, in New York, as we saw, the bill was actually, uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry, in Colorado, the committee went and did research on the findings and ended up voting against the bill in a 6-5 to five vote which will mean it will not be on the legislature's calendar this year. However, in New York, the bill is up for vote, so we could see it passed. This will not be the last puppy mill bill vote this year. Uh, Right now, animal rights activists are becoming much more mainstream and growing in number and are going to have more bills on House floors this year. So stay tuned and let your legislator know what you think about these bills. Study the economics of it. Do you think these bills do enough? don't go far enough, or if you're on the flip side, do you think this actually hurts small business? Something to think about, and your legislators can't do their job if they don't know your opinion. So call them up or email them and let them know.